You're watching Pegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. tried to play it cool, hiding my true feelings beneath this chauvinistic male bravado. And although I spent my young adult life inside conflicting debates, meeting my soulmate was fate. It was a manifestation of destiny because she was the missing ingredient to my delicious recipe. Now regretfully, I committed repeated infidelities. I was a bad boy, acting like I was a good man. My own arrogance bred stupidity. I aspired to be sexual while impersonating an intellectual. Now I'm new school, but I'm blended in old school philosophy, but I flunked out of having just a little bit of class, chasing after other women, honestly. I was, I was 19 when, when I met the love of my life inside the Clark Atlanta University rec room. What's up? How you doing? My name is Miles. It's nice to meet you. Now she was checking out this corny basketball playing looking guy. I intercepted his pass to her. Took a shot when I walked up and said, hi. <laughs> Her eyes were hypnotic, spellbound, cocoa brown. I was like, excuse me, miss, but how can I be down? Now she was slightly taller and thin, and she had the most beautiful chocolate skin. And I can still remember when we talked for hours on end, just laughing and giggling. We had most excellent adventures. She would call me from a Circle K payphone on her way home from school. Her voice was warm, and for me, this wasn't the norm. And as I sat in my dorm, we debated everything from the powers of politics to the pleasures of porn. Now, I still love her in ways that make me so confused, but my intentions were often selfish and cruel. I was a fool who frequently tried to play it cool, hiding my true feelings beneath this chauvinistic male bravado. And although I still cry myself to sleep some nights, time travel my daydreams, reliving every scene since we met much differently. Band-aids can't stop the abuse emotions from overflowing. Alcohol can't heal a deep hurt left unattended. Drugs don't numb the pain of our separation, and trust me, apology poems don't mend broken hearts. So I offered mine seeking forgiveness. The bottom line is, I cheated and I lied. I prayed for her return, but then I cried when she denied. I lost a great woman in search of the real man in me. It was a hard lesson to learn only after losing my queen and my family. Now, I wanted to help her raise our daughters correctly, so I hope that one day they can still love me and respect me. I was a fool who frequently tried to play it cool. I was always fronting, but now I'm no longer on the prowl. I'm just good for her. Everything is gonna be 
The fifth time was one of the best we ever spent. Seven days a week, a thousand dribbles on my left hand. The sixth time, I remember holding you in between my legs while waiting for that orange line train, waiting in the city where we got a million ball players trying to master one guard, kill a crossover, which is nice, but can you shoot? Can you finish? You got a million dollar move with a 10 cent finish, and you wonder why the trials come. 16 names are posted, and yours ain't one. The seventh time, I never try to get you back. Plus, it was beginning to be too expensive to start over. Well, maybe I was being too cheap. Would you spend $20 to hang out with me? <laughs> Would you spend $20 to hang out with me? I didn't think so. I love you, bro, Mr. Wilson. Five seconds to go. Last quarter, double overtime. The team really needs this one. Three, two, he shoots. Listen, I just came down here to play some ball for a bit. I ain't trying to get nothing with y'all. Just get us some hoops before I uh, gotta go to work. Just ball out before I gotta go to work. That's it. Don't make this into something that ain't y'all for real. Listen, kid. Way too early this type of stuff. I don't have the patience to be dealing with you right now. Nobody comes out this early in the morning to play ball. But you know that boy? And your associate? They ain't in the office right now. They ain't business hours starting to lay around here. What, what you talking about? Yeah, them fools show up as soon as the sun comes up. Most of them don't really play ball, though. Listen, this is dropping weapon nice and slow, all right? You couldn't hear it with your headphones on. That, that, that's all. And there ain't no basketball going on over here. This ain't that kind of park anyhow. When you try to park over there in MLK Boulevard, there's never any cops over there. What you talking about? Man, listen, I just came to play some ball, really. It's too bad nobody's out. What about you? You play ball? Me tired. Now nah, I forgot my pistol. <laughs> Man, I'm just trying to get my exercise on, you know? I see you trying to stretch that box. I ain't hating on you, homie. It gets you much. Just try not to shoot nobody with that in the yard. How did you? We know what it's gonna look like, son. We need to get a little old. We got an eye for that kind of stuff. No matter what, we can spot a poser. Well, it could have been loaded. Mm. I had to hide the bullets last night for my BM, mm. my baby's mom. See, she's always letting my daughter play with and, and stuff. She's always putting her finger on the trigger saying, take that, pop, bend, yeah, daddy, take that off. What's that a dream I had? I don't even know, man, but I just decided that I don't really think she wants to, well, I don't really think she will, but better safe than sorry, right? But I just said, that's it, you know? I'm done with her. I can't be sleeping somewhere where I'm not wanted. She got my daughter all over the next room with a crib all filled with water guns and super soakers and spray bottles. Oh, get her ready to blast me in my sleep, man. Like, like she be training her to take me out. And I don't even know what to do sometimes, but I got the books right here in my bag. Why don't you leave those in your bag for a minute, all right? Or take the heat somewhere else. Besides, you still think you're playing a game over here? Yo. What you two OGs playing? Checkers? Oh. What? Now you done woke me up. Mm. Junior, don't you ever disrespect us like that again. Mm -hmm. This game right here exercises your mind. Well, this game right here is a secret to life. Alright. This is the roadmap to your destiny. Mm -hmm. The blueprint to any kind of success. Yeah. This is light versus dark. Mm -hmm. Good versus evil. Yes. Jesus versus the devil. Why well, got me the devil? <laughs> <laughs> this game right here, boy, you just don't know. <laughs> you go ahead, Otis. Tell him something. What's your name, son? Disney. You don't say. I'm Brother Otis. This is Brother Clyde here. Yeah, I'm Clyde, little homie. You can call me Mr. Clyde. Now listen here, Otis. You want to learn this game, the best way is to have a seat and watch a couple of chess matches play. Yeah, since we only have one chess match with us here today, I suggest you watch me. Check! Y'all got no one of them chairs? Nah, nah my, my brother. brother. You, you got to get your own. own. You grab that new over there. I can loan this piece of wood. Now sit back. Hey, you're moving. Say, let me ask you something. Am I my brother's keeper? To keep my eyes closed and head down, ignoring his ignorance. 
displaying my distaste for his discrepancies, diluting my morals, dissolving my scruples, and degrading my decisions. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but our false principles force us to look the other way. We are all read the gospel according to mind your own business. The manuscript that proclaimed it has nothing to do with me. The section of the Torah which contains verses about selective seeing. The Torah which tells us to tread lightly towards other people's troubles. Am I my brother's keeper? I'll say that. Thank you. That's fine. I'll take that matter. We can trade all day. It's not even proud. Good. You fell right into the trap. Give me that, Bishop. Ow! Bang! There it is. So all the pieces move in their own way? Pretty much. Brooks, do that. Pawns can do that sometimes. <laughs> so what will be in this conversation? You mean before you reach by your epiphany on the basketball before you have to go get caught again? No, but I sense you about to ease into it. Well, it all started when I was a little bit. I say right around your age. Man, I was hustling. I used to go out there with a straight them fools up. Bathroom in his pocket was clear. His business wasn't so good though. Before the economy blows up, I would drive up in my baby blue Cadillac, leave the windows down, playing all the jams, man. Then one day I came through and it was then my child who was trying to catch some of my pen pen. I had like eight hundred big ones on the line in that game. I needed to talk to everybody on that team, it seemed like. I mean, I had the ball, man. Later on, they tried to say that I was ball hogging, but man, I could score. And that's when I got shot. I guess Tyrone wasn't going to let me walk away with all of his money. I woke up in the hospital, and someone left a King James version on the nightstand. And that's when I decided. I'd become a messenger of the Lord. I would be keeper of the clock. The golden rule became my mind. I left the basketball court and eventually became a full fledged minister of the Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Now I'm birthday kid. Yes, sir. Well, you know, one day, I 
are going to be a lot of money. I tell you, if you want to make a profit in this market, put your dollars on water. One day, clean water may cost as much as a gallon of gasoline. Hey, so what's it like being a night watchman as uh, security? Uh, uh, you mean <laughs> parks, <laughs> recreation, and maintenance coordinator? Yeah, that. Uh, what's it like? How long you been doing? Uh, yeah, it's just ups and downs. I've been doing this for about um, six or seven years now. How about that? Six or seven years? <laughs> That's about how long it's been since I had to quit school and get into the pharmacy uh, business. <laughs> Oh, you the one for the pharmacy down the road. You mean the one over there next to the one they built next to the one? No, 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 no. The big one hey. over there by MLK Boulevard. And then the park. Oh, nice. Now you must see a lot of drugs go through that spot. They sure do sell a lot of drugs on that block, actually. Pull it back! And squeeze. Lost boys search for manhood, exploring the golden page streets of a brick city spattered in violence. Silence overcomes a shooter's whole body. Split seconds before, there you go, is yell, pull it back, and squeeze. It's automatic, empty, reload and shoot some more until fingers are sore and bleeding. Victims bleeding from mercy for bloodthirsty. Smooth criminals place no value in human life. Deafening shots echo through the war-torn blocks of our village. Decades of spillage taught these lost boys to have heart. Thirsty for cream! You know what I mean. The American dream got you on your hands and knees. They teach capitalism in the schools. But they ban the Bible. They tell you all about their business cycles, and you become disciples. Now they're lying to you. Courage is bought off-road in dark alleyways. Sons of guns jam to arrhythmias. Sinister melodies are Teflon-coated. Lock and load it. Put it back! And, and squeeze. squeeze. Eager students and devout followers take the bait while the big fish swallow us. Go down, Moses. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. We put Christ on hold. In the midnight of crisis for the castle, the Benjamins got a choke hold on my community's neck. Adrenaline junkies marry my their regular march. It's like, keep it real. I'm going to do me. Get money. <laughs> now it's funny how time flies. Years ago, we were moving targets. Now we're the urban market, targeted in different ways. As soon as we get paid, the man wants his check back. While our kids get left back. And the school system's backtrack. Pull it back and squeeze. Fast and slow, kid, kids cracking sermons. Providing yeah. life lessons right into the right ventricle. Releasing the anger pent up inside the oppression pressure cook. Up, standing and women become hookers selling flesh in the interest of clocking those dollars. Ducats and pesos, the police chase holes around the tenements. But the truth is self evident. The inhabitants of this country still go hungry. For the proof is in the pudding. It's in the putting of your faith in these small green rectangles. When the wool is over your eyes, you can't see from all the angles. They wash your thinking cap. And now your brain is star spangled jingle. Jingle. Music to your ears or a precursor for tears. If your worst fear is losing your last dollar, you might as well pick up that slave car and begin the cycle. Whether it's pounds or yen, that money ain't your friend. You're talking nonsense. Capitalists ain't got no conscience. Like the criminals who pull it back and squeeze, pop, pop. Two shots invested into this lost boy's chest. With no return or added value, he prays to God as his pulse weakens. Last breath taken, May, May 30th, Memorial, Memorial Weekend. Pull it back and squeeze. Hmm. Yeah, man, it's all about the money. When I was working as a stockbroker, you were a stockbroker? Well, that's what I did before I did this. Now, who knew that this would only last a few weeks? A few weeks? You said six or seven years. Yeah, you said six or seven years. And this dude is lying. Oh, OK, all right, all right, all right. All right, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Now, now, I have been here about six or seven years. It's just that I only worked here for a few weeks. I found this position after the second Great Depression, but I was laid off three weeks after I started doing budget cutting. My wife left me and then I started drinking pretty heavily after that. And well, we got into it one night. She called the police on me. It was on a Friday. Now I spent the whole weekend in lockup. And when I got out on Monday, she took my kids, mm. sold my house, oh. got my car, and my bowling ball collection. Not, Not the, the bowling ball, ball collection. <laughs> She just texted me a picture of the moving van filled with stuff and then called me from the highway. Now, that day I was out searching for a job and I was supposed to return this uniform too, but the way she called me, 
This is not the way God made me. Mm -hmm. I completely fell apart. I spent all the money I had left in my wallet at the liquor store buying all kinds of crazy liquor. Literally, just crawled into a hole. I woke up here three days later in this park and I figured, well, if I can make it to three days, I could just stay until I figured something out, but I guess I lost track of time. Yeah, I can relate for sure, man. Six, seven years ago, I was working as a chef for a private boarding school. When the freshman 2.0 happened, and let a bunch of us go. I eventually had to return to the city. So, what am I? What do you do? Yeah. Well, I still clean up the park during the day. The cops come by every once in a blue to clean up the market place on the basketball court, but they see me in my uniform picking up trash. They never bother me. Mostly I just keep to myself in my little cave over there. I kind of write poetry and talk to myself. I don't know. All I ever knew was the stock market, investing, and accounting. I just can't seem to get it together. I don't have any motivation now that my family's gone, and I, I don't even know where they moved to. She just took off. Oh, oh, hold on a second. You mean you don't work here no more? You actually live here in the park? Man, I thought I was broke. Everything is about the money, man. I can't afford to feed my daughter some weeks. I couldn't even afford to go back to school. I couldn't even afford to go to the hospital. It's all about the cream. Breathe. Cream. Breathe. Got a bill, you know. Got a bill, you know. Got a dollar, got a dollar, got a dollar. Health, spirituality, and life. The God color. And held the trees to shade is spiritual. It keeps me calm while relaxing people around me can be invited. Son of a man of peace. So you can relax. There's no need to be afraid. I was born in Martin Luther King's philosophy. Raise me so hard to reach the bodies, loving all of my people, and that's why I fight to keep from knocking someone's head off, frustrated from all these colors in my blood, black, African-American, Cherokee Indian, poetry is a universal religion. I was raised to to understand what my colors represent, but some are born followers, born with what they see the masses doing. So if one million people said, the color is now green, would you only embrace that shade? I hope not. There are few shades I will attach to my life so I will remain green. The truth is often around you without seldom you respect it. God's and signs will also reflect, so I respect the earth. I emulate the pace of a turtle. Walking for hundreds of years of oppression and disrespect for others who point unaware that eventually this turtle will cross that finish line. The same time it took for me to ascribe these words and this turtle pace in the end will keep everything fluffy and rabbit rappers and throw together in a hot minute. Sometimes I ask myself, what's wrong with these people? Brainwashed, bamboozled, and belittled. Playing the game of life, what happens to honesty? And poor family values. And Philadelphia, German towns, unhappy power. When it didn't have thousands of Heineken bottles smothering our black tops. I bet in a basketball game and lost. Came to that late, becoming a few shades short of what they were looking for. And I never knew that a person's life was a stake for a mere measly. Three dollars. Green. You're watching Pegarai TV. Rhode Island's public access channel. R.I.P. from the rip. At first glance, you see death. I best you breathe life and souls I want to get right Fight with unconditional methods Twist it, test it over a period of a lifespan Record on demand, write down who, what, when, where, and why Real intellectual people Try to consume every word right in Pawtucky Holding this bucket of tears Watch one turn into cheers
mais. watching Pegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. mistakes we make and avoid any conflict or confrontation. <coughs> as crazy as it sounds, when strangers make noise, we draw the shades over our ears, blocking their sounds with our mouths muted, witnessing domestic drama with our eyes closed. Oh, we'll shout from the mountaintops of our racial inequalities. We'll make noise when gas prices soar. We'll even call out those that abuse their political positions. But when Leroy is beating his wife, when our next door neighbor is being robbed by Devo, when Keisha's all cracked out, and seven months pregnant from her uncle from that time she went down south. We're so quiet. We get tunnel vision. We'll even cringe. When we hear about what happened at Penn State, Chris Brown and Rihanna. R. Kelly and O.J. Simpson. Don't, don't even go there. <laughs> Fight in your life. So all those I've had to fight 
Man, I don't even think it. She must be a nymphomaniac the way she rides me. She is deep inside of me, like a sickness, like an itch I cannot scratch. She is a slow bleeding of my senses. She takes a drop of blood and makes the night drip solitude. She is my demon. She is the reason I lie awake in bed alone at night, knowing she is just a few inches away and can be just a few inches deep into my skin in just a few seconds. I am only a place for her to rest, the dismal interim between life and death. I am used and discarded after she climbs into me and leaves her mark. She must be an nymphomaniac the way she rides me. I've got tracks to prove that she has seen the course of my planes. She has held my hand to the deserts and seen me through my tear street jungles. I don't need to sleep anymore. Life is an unnecessary detour. My fingers know the way. I dig a hole, I plant a seed, and grow blossoms that open up at moonlight and close at dawn. She is there beside me, dancing me over to the ledge and leading me backwards. I hold my breath and release her, release me. I allow myself to relax. And I know that she will wait for me, a moment hidden like a secret in a haystack. I never heard it told like that before. You used to be a... Uh... Yeah, I cleaned up after a real bad night. Lasted four days. <laughs> you came into my church one Sunday morning. I remember I was preaching about the children of Israel. Moses and the burning bush. This fool comes in with an actual bush that he unstole from someone's job. <laughs> Talking to me. And it was almost Thanksgiving, and we had all this food bread for the people. This food comes in with this bush talking to him. Then he starts stuffing his face with food. We haven't even seen grace yet, and he just goes in on food. Eating all the pumpkin pie, the turkey, the mashed potatoes and rice. And all the while, I'm trying to stop myself from laughing just so I can get back to my son. And then all of a sudden, he just passed out. Right there, in front of everybody. Yeah, they got me some help. I was living a couple of weeks. A couple of months went by, I had myself a job working in the prep cook, chopping the vegetables and such. I went back to school. I got my culinary certificate. I was a new man. I never forgot about the preacher who saved me from the burning bush. We stayed in touch. And I got that job at the boarding school. It was like a blessing from God himself. I worked hard for them, but I didn't work for anybody in my whole life. I, Love that job. The depression came along and they let a bunch of us go. They downsized to just four chefs. And I didn't make the cut. And I admit the thought did occur to go back to my old ways. I actually thought it would be better to just give up. Man, I prayed hard for a miracle. I was praying so hard, in fact, that one day while walking down the street, mumbling to myself, I ran right smack into the preacher from my burning bush days. He asked how I was doing, and well, I told him. He offered me a job working for him and a place to stay. We don't make eye contact with the less fortunate. He draws unwanted responsibility. We shy away from other people's pain and make up the guilt with turkey and Christmas donations. Shame holds us high sister for charity. But the child change we contribute to these charity organizations will give us a full sense of godliness. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am.
Get up on in there.
fireworks out my house. Thanks, man. I promise you won't regret this. <laughs> Hunger visits the rich and the poor. Calamity keeps a blind eye to whomever walks in its path. And we can't wait for another Katrina or Rita or Fukushima to find in our hearts to give. As if it wipes the slate clean, keeps the guilt off our turned backs. Life tsunamis happen on a day, causing the foreclosure of our souls to suicide for this sweet serenade. People pulling up their prints with an exchange of putting proper provision on the taste. Starvation is the universal language of poverty. We are deaf to the travesty of hungry bellies. The stench of neglect is still here. The stain of apathy won't go away. The ugliness of Wall Street is now highlighted in the occupation of public spaces by those who previously had occupations. While the military-industrial complex remains a complex occupation. And the military seems to have a strange preoccupation with the occupation. So yes, I am my brother's keeper, offering spoken nourishment to a dying world, lighting the load from my brother's back, lending him a helping hand, helping him to stand on his own two feet, keeping my brother as I am. and sentenced to 18 to 20 years in jail. In 1937, in Herndon versus Lowry, the Supreme Court of the United States struck down the Georgia's insurrection law as unconstitutional, and Herndon was released. 
Hughes used the facts in this case in a play Angela Herded in June of 1936. There's another note where he mentions Libnik, um, or the rivers where you are drowned like Libnik. Uh, Karl Libnik and his associate Rosa Luxemburg, uh, with whom he founded the German Communist Party. On June 15, 1919, Libnik and Luxemburg were arrested by the German police. They were executed without trial on the same day. According to Wikipedia, they were brought to the Eden Hotel in Berlin where they were tortured and interrogated for several hours. Following this, Luxembourg was beaten with rifle butts and afterwards shot. Her corpse was thrown into the nearby river while Libnik was forced to step out of a car where he was shot when he stood up in the back. I make the following personal note. This poem was written before 1960. You may, might get the idea that it was written um, in the 60s, but it was actually written before 1950. Uh, in the years long before the civil rights movement existed. And I love this poem and I care about it because kids are dying today. They're dying from suicide, they're dying from police chases, they're dying from stand your ground laws, they're dying from overdoses, they're dying from all the lethal events of modern America. So if you know a family that has lost a child, then I dedicate this reading to them. Kids will die. This is for the kids who die, black and white. For kids will die certainly. The old and rich will live on a while, as always, letting kids die, eating blood and gold. Kids will die in the swamps of Mississippi, organizing sharecroppers. Kids will die in the orange groves of California, telling others just to get together. Whites and Filipinos, Negroes and Mexicans, all kinds of kids will die, who don't believe in lies and bribes and contentment and a lousy peace. Of course, the wise and learned who pen editorials in the papers and the gentlemen with doctor in front of their names white and black, will live on, weaving words to smother the kids who die. And the sleazy courts, and the bribe-reaching police, and the blood-loving generals, and the money-loving creatures will all raise their hands against the kids who die, beating them with laws, and clubs, and bayonets, and bullets to frighten the people. For the kids who die are the iron in the blood of the people. And the old and the rich don't want the people to taste the iron of the kids who die. Don't want the people to get wise to their own power, to believe Angela Herndon, or even get together. Listen. Kids who die, maybe now there will be no monument to, for you, except in our hearts. Maybe your bodies will be lost in a swamp, or a prison grave, or a potter's field, or the rivers where you are drowned like Livnik. But the day will come. You are sure yourselves that it is coming where the marching feet of the masses will raise you a living monument of love and joy and laughter and black hands and white hands clasped as one in a song that reaches the sky, the song of the life triumphant to kids who die.
wanted to be a pendulum. So sick of being the world's punching bag, she longed to swing, her legs dangling ticking off seconds like items on her to-do list. How could we have been so clueless? She was right under our noses, a rose a shade of sunshine dancing divinely down a carpet of broken glass and barbed wire. She had thorns in her shoes and knife points in her toes, but she never went. She danced like an autumn leaf in an Indian summer evening breeze blowing effortlessly across the courtyard. She danced, arms outstretched, eyes closed, spinning into infinity. She, she stumbled, stumbled into my arms, arms one night. And I, previously filling out my dance card, opted out, purchased the past, pursued another untaken path. She was Sylvia Platt, Emily Dickinson, tortured soul, dancing cavalierly with a cactus. She was the most clever actress, Cleopatra. Jones. With a meat cleaver for a tongue, she spared no swords, left no headstone standing. She, she was standing, standing right there, telling everybody how she wanted to dance, to twist, to bend into the wind, feeling the spring in her wings. She wanted to sing, to swing, and sting. Her name means brilliant light. The German word for morning. She made the world shimmer, but alas, she was only a glimmer. Be a 